the WD-40 doesn't work. So today we're going to take a look at how we can open bolts using acid. It's been sitting under the ground for more than 20 years and it has been rusted completely together. 250 milliliters of plain distilled water. Then I'm adding 250 milliliters of muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid as the chemist would call it. This is a very strong acid and as you can see the solution goes green because the rust, the iron oxide immediately starts to dissolve at these pH levels. Let's wait and see what happens. Obviously nothing happens to the polyethylene wire which is acid resistant. Since the bolt has been sitting under the ground 20 years and is completely covered with rust, it takes a while until you will see the bubbles appear. But already now some bubbles are coming off. The iron oxide goes into solution because this acidic media can maintain ferric ions in their suspended state. That means that the iron, which is chemically a composition of iron, Fe, ferric ions and oxygen, they are separated and the rust is falling apart. You can also see now a gradient in the solution. We have down here much more iron ions than up here. It's because the rust is gradually falling off and dissolving but in the end all this solution will have the same color when the rust is dissolved. Now, hopefully, we will see also the rust in the thread being dissolved, so we can separate the bolt from the nut. We can see how the deep threads are covered by rust. But as we dissolve the rust, hydrogen is formed on the areas where the metal starts appearing. For example, you can see over there where we have the pure iron already starting to display that a lot of bubbles form. Since this acid is very strong, you have to be very careful and wear gloves and full protection to carry out an experiment like this. Right now, a lot of hydrogen gas is forming. However, if you work in a ventilated area like this, this hydrogen 
when mixed with regular air, will not be ignitable. You actually have to capture it to be able to ignite this hydrogen. Now we can see that also over here, and we can start seeing the shiny metal. So we can come to the conclusion that we need the metal, the pure metal, to be able to generate a lot of hydrogen gas or a small amount of hydrogen gas in reality, but per surface area, a lot. The rust in itself goes completely into the solution. Here you can see on the left side, right over here, a characteristic of rust. Rust is porous, and since it's porous, then when the acid penetrates into the rust, you can see that it actually fragments off your piece of metal. Right here. This is something you can never achieve with a WD-40 or any other penetrant oil for that matter. I will make an attempt to knock off some of it by using the acid resistant polyethylene cord to move it around. Hopefully we are getting some acid into the threads as well and dissolving rust inside the thread in between the nut and the bolt. Some of the iron oxide actually joins with the hydrogen gas and surfaces. So now it's been about 30 minutes. So once I see that all the surface rust has been removed, I will wait another 10 minutes and then I will bring it up and hope that we penetrate it into the thread between the bolt and the nut. So I took it up and uh, rinsed it off and all the surface rust is now gone but uh, the question is now whether we will be able to get the acid into that thread that you see here in the image. It's been in there now for a total time of 40 minutes. and. Uh, You see a little bit less action in this one, but that's because all the or the loose rust sedimented when I took it off. And now the suspension is a little bit more clear, but if we go back to the turbulent solution that you saw before. So the bolt has now been sitting in there for about one hour, and as you can see the bubbles are smaller. They're formed pretty much everywhere and a dull metal shiny surface is covering except from some parts that are black. I will hold it up and see if you can see properly how it looks but there's some shine into it now. So I'm going to terminate this. So it's been one hour in 50% diluted hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid. And we're just going to pull up
the mold and transfer it over into regular tap water and we can put this aside that will be neutralized and eliminated and now this surface is as good as well entirely clean surface rust it's a bit of a blackish color to it and that's some remains of something called ferrihydrate which forms when the hydrogen is attacking the iron surface this reddish color here is actually paint it's not rust I don't know why they would paint the bolt. Anyway, we will see when we remove the nut how far down inside we've been able to clean off the rust. So I've got it set up in a vise now. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'll zoom in. Maybe you can see here from this one that the nut actually bubbles a bit. If you look over there in relation to the bolt, just a regular polygrid doesn't do it though. I have to get some more massive tool to be able to pull this one off so we can have a look inside. Well, obviously the nut is loose. It's actually coming along here. And there we go. So opening bolts with strong acid is doable. But let's take a look at how the bolt or how the nut looks inside. And I could probably have kept it in the acid bath for another half an hour and then I think the rest of the rust, well there's a little bit left, would have dissolved inside the threads as well. I'll take a look at this one. What we see here is that the bolt in itself has been less exposed to oxidation or rusting since it's been covered by the nut. There's still some oil coming off here which probably was used 20 years ago when this nut was put in place. Well thanks for listening guys I hope this uh, clarify something and uh, and that is that muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid can effectively be used as diluted to open stuck nuts